So chapter seven in your textbook, muscle skeletal system. So we're doing both muscles and bones. So how many bones are there? Yeah, about 204, 205, 206 average. So there's how many names you need to learn? It's not 200. <laughs> how many muscles are there? 600 plus. How many of those names do you need to know? Not all of them. Just enough to get by. Right? Bones, joints, and muscles. So bones is the framework. Muscles, you get to pull against those bones for movement. The other thing muscles do is heat. And bones, not just only movement, but protection. So your ribs protect your internal organs. Protects your brain, your skull hopefully does. So we got the skull. It's made out of multiple bones, right? So once you learn the bone names, it'll make it easier for you to learn the muscles because they name the muscles based on where they are, right? According to the bones. So here, your front of your head, that's your frontal bone. And the muscle in the front is the frontalis, right? You got a temporal bone here on the side, right? And the muscle there is the temporalis. Makes it that easy. The sternum, three parts to it. One, two, three. Right? So the whole thing is the sternum. Ribs, cartilage, not too bad. Muscles. So we got the frontal bone. The muscle there is the frontal muscle. Your pecs, uh, it looks like a, <laughs> it looks like a mohawk. Your pecs. Pectoralis. Now, what connects bone to bone? Ligaments. Ligaments. What connects bone to muscle? Joints. Not joints. Um, cartilage. Cartilage at the end, but bone to muscle. What's all these strings called here in your your arm and in your wrist? What are those called? Tendons. <gasps> Tendon. A little brain fart. So we got ligaments. And then what connects muscle to muscle? What connects one muscle to another muscle? What do you call it? There's four arrows pointing, five arrows pointing. <laughs> it's the aponeurosis. So it's a brand new term for you guys probably. But connecting muscle to muscle is aponeurosis. So here you got a little bit of ab muscle, and then it connects to the next bit of ab muscle, and then it connects to the next ab muscle. Is that gristle? No, no, no. Gristle is fat. This is the tough connective tissue that usually is at the bottom of the gristle. You know how there's gristle, and then you cut, and it's all tough? That's the aponeurosis. Once it cooks down, it gets soft. Like on top of your head, if you didn't have your aponeurosis up here, where all the muscles attached to, you have a thick fat head, too heavy. The longest muscle in your body is the sartorius. So it, all the way up here where the hip is, and it goes to the front of the knee. Pretty crazy, sartorius. All right, let's get into the terms. So everybody palpate for the acromion process of your scapula. All right, so your shoulder blade has a little point right here. And in order to give the flu shot, you need to find it, go three finger widths down, and that's your injection site into the deltoid. So that's the acromion process. Artho, we already had joint. Brachy, that's the upper arm. Uh, the lower arm is usually um, anti brachy. So brachy, anti brachy. Anti, I guess, before, before the arm. Versa, those are cushion. In your joints, um, your meniscus, it's like airbags that cushion your joints. The heel bone, calcano. There's a wine company called Calcanus, because how do you make wine? You gotta crush the grapes, right? Calcium's easy, or calcium. Carpies is wrists. Hand bones are gonna be metacarpals. All right, so you got carpals. Metacarpals, fingers and toes, they're just phalanges or digits. Digits, yeah. Cephal is your head. Cephalic. 
cephalization. Cervic generically is neck. So we have the cervix of the uterus, and then we have the cervix of the vertebral column. How many bones in your neck? Seven. How many bones in a giraffe neck? I, th I think seven as well. Their bones are just longer. Mammals and mammals should be the same. <laughs> Chondros cartilage, recall, hypochondriatic region. Right, your nine regions. And then bumps on the bone. So you see these round kind of bumps here, this round bump here. All right. Any bump on a bone is called a process, but there are particular names for different processes. So a condyle um, is one of them. Coast is ribs. Crane for skull. Fingers and toes, back below. And then every muscle is covered by a tissue layer called fascia. So if you ever ate like a chicken drumstick, right, and you see how those muscles kind of just fall apart, that's because every muscle belly is wrapped around in fascia. It's sac. It's muscle sac. Femur, the largest bone, right? That's your thigh bone. And then the humerus, that's your upper arm bone, humero. So this is not too bad. A lot of the terms are just shortened of what the term is. Makes it easy. Your hip bone has three parts. So the ilium is not a bone. It's just a portion of the coxa bone. So that is right here in front. The ischium is the part of the coxa that you sit on. So literally, that's your butt bone. And then in the front, where your pubis symphysis is, where the two bones join together, that's the pubis region. Who is the hunchback of Notre Dame? So quasi, I think it starts with a Q, but it kind of sounds like kyphosis. Lamina, just think of layers like laminated board, laminations. Leo is smooth, myo is muscle. Um, striated muscle is rhabdo, rhabdomyo. Rhabdomyolosis is bad. You guys ever looked up Uncle Rhabdo? No? So if you do CrossFit, it's like a cult. They just overdo it, and then their muscles will dissolve into their bloodstream. Toxic to the kidneys. You pee out Coca-Cola, you die. So their mascot is Uncle Rhabdo, <laughs> some idiot that overdid it. Lumbo. You have five lumbar vertebrae. Your upper jaw is max, so Larry. What's your lower jaw? Mm, mandible. Good. <laughs> so we got carpals, metacarpals, dactyle, dactylo, or phalanges. My Leo is spinal cord or bone marrow. So you have to look in context. On the left. Osteo's bone, patella, that's your kneecap. So your patellar region in front, that's the front of the knee. The back of the knee is popliteal, so a little bit different. So knee doesn't mean the whole knee, this is just the front of the knee. Feet, ped, pod is also feet or foot. Ped is also children, right? Pediatrics. Fingers or toes, phalanges. So you got dactyle, phalanges, and your digits, fingers or toes. So there's tons. You got 14 phalanges on each hand times both hands and feet. So how many is that? 56 bone names, you already know. So it makes it easy. And then you got 31 spinal. So that's already half of your bone names uh, already done. Ribs, you got 24 ribs. There's another 24 names of bones to knock off your ribs. So right there, that's already 100. You don't need, not so Pod. Pedestrian, right? No ped crossing. I had no idea what that meant. 
but it was just short for pedestrian. I was off. No pediatrician crossing. Pubis. So that's the third part of the coxal bone that makes up your hip. Ratchy for spine. Radial. Huh. Forearm. Is your radius thumb side or pinky side? Radius it's is thumb, thumb side. side. The bone that rotates over mm -hmm. is the radius. Rhabdo, rod shape. So here are your striated muscles. Rhabdo, rhabdomyia. Rhabdomyia, striated muscles. Scapula looks like a spatula, right? So hopefully that helps you remember. It's a nice flat uh, triangular shape bone with a little ridge in the middle. Scoliosis, that's lateral curvature, so that's side to side. And your sternum has three parts. The top part, manubrium. Then you have your sternum, and then at the end, that's the xiphoid process. Joints. Joint capsules have synovial fluid and a synovial membrane. Tarso. So these are carpos. Then tarsals are ankle, ankle bone. Metatarsals are foot bones. And then the dactyles are the phalanges, or the fingers and toes. Tendon, tendino, you can use either one. So they connect muscle to bone. Tibia, that's your shin bone. Ulna, pinky side or thumb side? Pinky. Pinky, because we already got the thumb side. So here is diagram. Everything in blue is your axial skeleton. So that's just your cranium, spinal cord, I mean, vertebral column, and your ribs. Your appendicular skeleton refers to your appendages. So it's the pectoral girdle and the arms, and then the pelvic girdle and your legs. Use just the back side. <laughs> oh, no. So here, the ilium, so this portion of the hip bone is the ilium. The ischium, which you actually sit on, is right here. And then in the front is the pubis. So three regions of one bone. They're not three separate bones. So I already taught you how, guys how to learn about half the bone names, right? You got 54 phalanges, 31 vertebrae, 24 ribs, so a lot of redundancy. Uh, there's 10 hand bones, 10 metacarpals, 10 uh, metacarpals, metatarsals, so a lot. Types of bones. Uh, long bones usually support weight, they're usually in your arms and legs. Short bones, wrists and ankle. Flat bones, that's ribs and skull. They do not support weight. Your ribs are long, but do they support weight? No, right? They'll snap if you put any weight on it. And we only have one sesamoid bone. That is your kneecap, your patella. If it doesn't fall into long, short, flat, or sesamoid, then they just put them in irregular, irregular shape. Like your spinal cord, right? All your vertebral column have like weird spine sticking out. Long bones support weight. So let's go from, uh, let's go from the outside. Peri is around. So the layer covering around the bone is the periosteum. On the inside, you have a cavity on the inside. That's called the medullary cavity. And lining that is going to be the endosteum on the inside. So outside of the bone, inside of the bone. All bone has compact and spongy bone. So compact is the hard stuff on the surface. And then the spongy bone is where it is here, all canceled out. We have red bone marrow to make blood. And we have yellow bone marrow, which is just fat storage. The ends are called the ephesus. Right? The shaft is called the diaphysis. 
your growth plates, your bones don't grow at the end, they grow here at the epiphyseal plates, at the growth plates. That way your bones are extending in both directions. And when your growth plates completely solidify as bone, they're no longer cartilage, you're gonna no longer grow. So for uh, ladies at about age 18, your bones no longer extend. And then boys, since they hit puberty a little later, around 21. So if you're already 18, that's it. That is your height. If you're a male at 21, that's it. That's most likely your height. All right, so let's see. A, what type of bone is A? This big old ex bone. <laughs> the extended one, I was about to say. This big old long bone, all right? Uh, B, what type of bone is B? I don't know. I don't know what that is. So let's go to C. This is a skull. Yep, skull is flat. D is a spine. This one is irregular. And E is your kneecap, only one type. Sesamoid bone. So this, if it's not long, I guess it's short. I don't know. Uh, what is it? Oh, yeah, it is short. It's an ankle bone. <laughs> it's an ankle bone. So, yeah, it's a short bone. So, the episeal plates are your growth plates. This person, young or old? What do you think? Are their growth plates sealed? So, we can estimate their age, right? So probably their late teens. So if you ever watch that show Bones, right? That's what she's doing. She's like, oh, this is a 24-year-old female based on did you Now you know. Now you can understand those shows better. <laughs> All right, which knee is this? Is it left or right? So assume it's anatomical position. You have your shin bone, right? This is your shin bone. And then you have that little bone on the side. Is that little bone on the side, your fibula, is that on the inside of your foot or on the outside of your foot? You should know. Why are you feeling around? Is this the left leg, left knee, or the right knee? <laughs> right? Are you sure? You, you assume it's an anatomical position. So this would be the right side of the body. This would be the left side of the body. And that little bone is on the outside. So which knee is this? It is the left knee because the little bone is on the outside. So you have your the little bones on the outside. So you should be able to, to detect that. Right? So your ACL, A stands for anterior, so it's the ligament in front. Your PCL, posterior, it's the one in the back. And a lot of times that will get snapped if you get hit by the knee on the outside. Your medial collateral ligament is here on the medial side, and your lateral collateral ligament is on the lateral side. So they just name it by their anatomical position. So now you know. Anytime sports is on and they say ACL, MCL, now you know what got popped in the knee. Skull bones. Easy enough. Frontal we talked about. Your temporal bone. The biggest one is the parietal, and in the back where vision is processed, that is called the occipital bone. So you have the zygomatic bone here with the temporal bone, and it makes an arch. So that's called the zygomatic arch. So a little bit of this bone, a little bit of this bone connects together, and then you have muscles running underneath it. This is your styloid process. This is your mastoid process. So everybody feel for that bump behind their ear. Right? So some medication, you'll actually administer it there to the mastoid process. Maxillary upper jaw, lower jaw, mandible. Don't worry too much about these. Sinuses, they're empty spaces in your skull. Do a couple things lightens your head right otherwise your muscles will have to carry extra weight it gives you your sound the tone of your voice and 
it can get infected. Uh, you'll feel you'll feel all the pressure. Spinal column. So we used to be on all fours, right? So we came from animals. So when we're on all fours, all the weight of the body is supported by one, two, three, four. But now that we are upright, all that weight is on our spine. So our spine has to curve, right? Twice. And right here is the weak spot in our lower back. Because we went from four-legged to two-legged. So here's our vertebral column. Now we're supported on two legs. The sacrum is fused. It's about five vertebrae that fuse together. And the coccyx, anywhere from three to five. So people have varying numbers of bones in their body. Cervical radiograph. So what are we looking at? The neck. Cervical, yeah. So um, you guys ever seen an epidural done or have it done on you? Okay, epidural, they're pretty much accessing your spinal cord. All right, if they just go in a little bit more, bam, they're in your spinal cord. So they're just right outside of it to administer the drug. How long is that needle? It's super, it's super long, right? So if you feel on your back, you feel those little round bumps that stick out, that's this stuff here. Those are the spines of your vertebral column. Now, what they have you do is they have you lean forward, right? Never tell a patient to bend over. Always have them lean forward or bend at the waist. Never say bend over. Say lean <laughs> forward. And what that does is it separates those spines. Now we can get the needle in because your spinal cord is not until all the way pretty much at the center down here. So if you feel it and you think, oh, my spinal cord's right here. No, you got to put a two and a half inch needle all the way in to access for an epidural. So the epidural is um, administered right above the first meninges, the dura mater, hence the name epidural. It goes right above the dura mater. Know these numbers because for the nervous system, only one number changes. Right? So bones in the neck, seven. Bones in the thoracic, same as ribs. You have 12 pairs of ribs, so you have 12 thoracic vertebrae. Five in your lower back, five fused together, and your coxal bone is anywhere from three to five. So I guess they took the average. How many bones is that then? 19, 29, 23, 30, 31. About 31 altogether. Right? Now for nerves, the only one that changes is the nerve numbers in the cervical area. It's eight. Everything else, the numbers stay the same. Thirty something, yeah. So thirty something for your vertebral column, most of the. Way. The girdles. So what connects your appendages? In the upper girdle, it's only your clavicle making contact with the sternum right here. That's it. Everything else of your arm is floating. It's connect. It's held together by muscle and tendon. The lower pelvic girdle, of course, is fused to the sacrum. So it's actually fixed to the spinal cord. True and false ribs. Did you guys know you had false ribs? So true ribs connect to the sternum directly. All right. So here, one connects, two, three, four, five, six connects. Seven, that's the last one that connects directly to the sternum. Eight, nine, and ten, they connect to the cartilage of the previous one. Eleven and twelve are floating. So I think they did a wrong number here. Ah, I guess those, 
those are false as well they don't connect so that's why they are false ribs they don't directly connect to the sternum male versus female of course for childbirth a little bit wider and the pubic symphysis during childbirth it's a partially movable joint so it can flex bones and external yeah movement muscles so we'll get into uh, the muscles shortly uh, upper girdle so the humerus what's your funny bone So is it a bone? What is it? It's a nerve. So running right in this groove right here. So if you can feel in your elbow, there's a little groove right there, and that's where your nerve goes. So if you press on it, you can make your fingers twitch. So if I press on the nerve, you can see that twitching. There you go. So yeah, when I was a kid, I was bored. No. <laughs> so find the nerve, you can actually play with it and then make your arm move. We got carpals, wrists, metacarpals, hand, phalanges. You got 14 on each hand. Feet, very similar. You got your tarsals, metatarsal foot bones, and then the phalanges are your toes. Different types of joints. Ball and socket, think of your elbow and knee. Sorry, shoulder and hip. Hinge joint would be your elbow and knee. Pivot, your neck. So the first vertebrae is fused to the skull. And then the next one pivots on it. So your axis and axis. So all these saddle ones are in your wrists, so bones that slide past each other, right? In the wrist, when I flex, they're going to be sliding past each other. And then condyle, big old bumps. So let's see what they got. Uh, hinge, yep, they got the elbow. Uh, pivot, they got the atlas and axis. Ball and joint, they did hip. Saddle, all the joint ones. And then partially movable joints. And then you have immovable joints. All right, so that was bones. Not too bad. 206 or so. Now let's go to muscles. 600 plus muscles. Somebody said they were like a massage therapist or something. <laughs> they know the muscles. All right, three different types of muscles. So we'll start with skeletal. This is the only one that you can control, and they are striated. That means they have regular black and white patterns under the microscope. One muscle fiber is the same as one muscle cell. So if they say fiber, same as a cell. The difference is you can have multiple nucleases in these muscle cells. So you have super, super, super long muscles. Fibers. Cardiac muscle looks exactly like uh, skeletal muscle under the microscope except for they have intercalated discs so those intercalated discs allows for very fast muscle contraction lastly well, of course cardiac you can't control and lastly smooth you can't control it's mostly your organs all your organs are soft or smooth muscle uh, the good thing about smooth muscle is that it can overstretch without being damaged. So if a muscle like uh, like your calf muscle or your hamstring, if you overstretch that, it's going to tear and damage. Um, with smooth muscle, they can actually overstretch. And that builds kind of like elastic uh, power and it contracts even harder. Origin and insertion. The origin doesn't move or moves less. The insertion moves a lot more. 
So here they have the bicep. The origin is up here at the head of the humerus. The insertion is on the radius. So the bicep does two things. It flexes the arm and it supinates. So it also twists this way. Right? So it flex and supinate. So the part that doesn't move is the origin. And down here near the elbow, it moves a lot. So that is the insertion. When I'm addicted, I'm drawn towards the substance. Supinate, turning up. Pronate, turning down. And usually in the hands. Supinate, pronate. This is usually for the hands. Whereas dorsal flex and plantar flexion is usually for the feet. So pointing toes down. Pointing toes up. Radial graph. Pretty cool image. You can see the uh, blood vessels. Orthoscopic. So this is a joint. Scopic is, well, I'm using cameras. They used to cut you open, do their surgery, try to put you back together. Now they'll do a lot of orthoscopic surgery using um, just probes and cameras. Spina bifida. That is a condition where the spinal cord does not completely close. So there's two types. Cystica is when it does not completely close and you get some of the spinal cord out of the vertebral column. In uncudate, everything is contained within. There's just an incomplete opening. So I had a, a student that has spina bifida and she showed me her back and there's like a little there's like a little divot where she can almost insert a q-tip it's kind of weird so she had a mild case of spina bifida and she kept it from the military and joined yeah yeah so i i, I guess i guess hers was such a mild case it it, it went it fell through A lot of different types of um, bones. Green stick is usually a, a younger person where their bones are soft. So their bones bend, they don't break, but they don't bend back in place. So that's a green stick fracture. A simple open is when it's exposed. If you want to see a good one, there's a basketball player. A couple years ago, uh, college, he land on his foot, and I guess he already had micro fractures, and his lower leg snapped, and his bone was sticking out six inches during the middle of the game. So he jumped up, landed, and his leg just snapped, and it was sticking out. If your bone is exposed, don't let it dry. If any of that tissue dries out, it's really hard to uh, to heal up. What do they do? Oh, go to the hospital. So you got to cover it with a, something, something moist to keep it from drying out. Of these types of fractures, which one is most likely the result of abuse? Since you guys have to report abuse, which one do you think would be? Yeah, because you grab little kids and you yank them. Bones tend to break in a spiral pattern. So this is, hmm, what's going on here, right? Green sticks, okay, they're young. Kids fall down all the time. Uh, yeah, but spiral fracture, just ask good questions. Osteoporosis. So you're... Bones become porous. You lose the calcium and you will lose height. Mm -hmm. So she was 
Yeah, it, it's not that severe, but a couple inches is common. And uh, inflammation of the knee. Many types of arthritis. Uh, this might be rheumatoid arthritis. So in the case of rheumatoid arthritis, RA, it's autoimmune. So your own immune cells are attacking your joints. Friendly. Friendly fire. Scoliosis side to side, kyphosis, hunchback. J-Lo, lordosis. If you have a sway back. So side to side, scoliosis, hunchback, quasimodo has kyphosis. And if you have a sway back, lordosis. Amputation. It's kind of weird. You ever heard of phantom limb sensation? Mm -hmm. Where amputees can swear that they still feel that limb, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it just feels like you need to stretch the muscle. So just imagine you feel like you have a cramp in your hand at all time, but there is no hand. Kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Casting, easy enough. Break a bone keep your bones in place so they can heal. Splinting, we'll practice that in some of your classes. And that's to prevent further damage, like a finger splint. Mm -hmm. Traction, we got to keep the joints um, loose. So we can't allow you to be in a relaxed state. So we have to like pull on the joints in order for it to heal properly. Uh, here's surgery for spine injuries you ever heard of that they fuse the disc they fuse the vertebrae because you'll have your vertebrae and then you'll have a cushion disc and then you'll have your vertebrae again sometimes that disc moves out of place and it's pushing on your spinal cord right causing pain like a slip disc. Some people, their discs are so degraded, there's no more discs, there's no more cartilage, it's just bone on bone. Mm -hmm. So to prevent damaging more and more, they'll fuse them. Mm -hmm. And now you have less range of motion because you can't rotate. What's those shafts they give? Cortisone? Yeah. That's a steroid, not like so building muscle steroid. Okay. Yeah, those steroids reduce uh, inflammation. So they reduce your immune system because you're in pain. You're going to get inf inflammation. So the cortisone shot will block that response. Surgical repair of a joint. Puncturing a joint. So sometimes you'll have built up synovial fluid in a capsule and it's very painful. 18 gauge needle. Suck out some of that synovial fluid. And... Um, it should be clear. If it's uh, cloudy or bloody, then there might be a problem. What are we doing here? We're removing a synovial capsule. Fixation of a joint. Here we're removing a meniscus, a bursa. Too bad. For the musculoskeletal system, let's go on and complete week two, day one. The access code is 